Let's talk about the designer bags I loved but didn't buy. Hi guys, if you're new, my name is Celeste. We talk about all things luxury shopping and handbags. If you love those things, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification. I do post videos every week. So of course, I'm sure you're here because you love all things handbags. And if money was no object, we would definitely buy all of these. However, um, because we only have a limited number of funds, um, we cannot buy everything. So these are bags that I really, really like. I just like didn't buy or will not be buying in the near future. Okay, starting off with the Louis Vuitton on Cappy Scenes. So I actually really like this bag. Um, this is their like higher end bag um, from Louis Vuitton. I do really like this. However, two things to consider with this bag. This bag has a very, very bad resale value considering it's the highest price point bag at Louis Vuitton. Most of the time you can find this bag on the resale market for like 3,000, 2,000 even, like 2,500. Um, and so if I were to get this bag, I would definitely, definitely get this pre-loved. Another thing with this bag is that because it's so top heavy so you can see the hardware here it's just so top heavy that it tends to sag and lose its shape over time especially if you were to get a bigger size so with those two things in mind for a bag that now after the most recent price increase is over six thousand dollars i really don't think that it's worth it um i would still love to get one eventually i just would probably buy it from the pre-love market and not buy it in stores next on this list sticking with louis vuitton we have the louis vuitton chrisettes um if you've been following me for a while you definitely know that i really liked this bag originally and this was probably going to be the second bag that i was going to buy from louis vuitton like i had this on my list for a long time unfortunately i just like it didn't work out mainly because of the strap. The strap is not adjustable. It was too long on me and I'm not sure why Louis Vuitton like doesn't make adjustable straps. Like I feel like it's not that difficult um, but it just didn't work out and like theoretically I could have purchased an additional strap like an a, additional Damier Aben strap um, that I would have been able to use and that would have been fine but I didn't feel like I should have to do that so i never ended up getting it i do still think that it makes for a great everyday bag especially if it fits for you um so assuming you're not 411 then i'm sure it'll fit and um i think it's a great everyday bag it's carefree there's no vachetta on it you really like can't go wrong i just like unfortunately with the strap it just like didn't work out um and then i think over time i ended up just buying other bags that kind of had that same purchase or I ended up liking more so it kind of just fell off and off my list and we never got it. Next, we have the YSL Toy Lulu. So when I first saw this bag, I think it was like right before the pandemic started, really like January, February of 2020. And I really liked this bag. Um, I liked all the colors that it came in. And at the time they had a color called Dark Smog. I don't know if I'll be able to find a picture, but if I am, this is the color. It's kind of a dark gray it's kind of like the same color as this like palen bag so it's kind of a bluish gray color and i loved it especially with the gold hardware love um and that was the main reason why i was gonna get it and i think that also um at the time they haven't changed the strap yet so it was still an adjustable strap which we love and it was a reasonable price point um it was like around 1200 or 1150 at the time now i think the toy lulu is either like 1590 or like 1550 um i'll put the correct price here but um at the time i think it was kind of two things that i really liked i liked the color and i liked the price points i don't know that i can justify that price now especially when i have so many other bags that like serve the same function um i still really like the bag and i still think that it's a great everyday bag and i definitely still recommend it but i think when you have like so many bags let alone so many bags that you already like don't use because you don't leave the house it didn't make sense to add this to my collection not to say that i'll never get this but i think that if i were to get a ysl bag i'd probably end up getting something that's a little bit more unique that i don't really have probably like a ysl cassandra or even the like ysl shoulder bag um i don't know how to pronounce it and i, I don't want to butcher it either but i'll leave a picture here next on this list is the bottega veneta padded cassette chain bag when this bag first came out i think bottega was kind of just like making its uh moments again and starting to come back i loved the puffy look of it i loved the thick chain because your girl's a little bit like some people say it's tacky but like i i kind of love it so i 
loved this bag at the price point it was at back then it wasn't that bad after all the price increases now it's kind of it's kind of hefty but i tried this bag on in stores and it is so freaking heavy like the bag empty is heavy and it's mainly because of the chain um this bag also doesn't have interior lining so it's just like the same leather material on the inside as well so hypothetically if you were to um i don't know your pen breaks and it like spills it doesn't like get just on the interior of the bag it ends up spilling onto the outside as well so things like that that i feel like for almost four thousand dollars it's just like not really worth it i love the look of it and i definitely admire it from afar however because it's so heavy and the price point and just like I don't know why it was so hard to put like an interior lining inside. We're gonna have to pass on that, but I do really love the look of it and I do admire from afar. Next, we have the Prada Crystal Clio. So when I originally saw the Prada Crystal Re-Edition, if you haven't seen that video, I'll leave it up here for you guys, like the unboxing and review and stuff. Um, I originally saw that the re-edition and I was like wow this is so nice I love it and then eventually like a few months later um I it took a while for me to kind of pull the plug on the re-edition you guys know because it was like a trendier bag um so I took some time to really like think about it and make sure that I like really wanted it and during that time they came out with the crystal Clio here she is here she's stunning absolutely love her um i feel like the size was perfect it was a little bit more of a structured shape because the crystal re-edition that i have um if you don't have an organizer inside it kind of sags a little bit which is like not a big of a problem but um it sags and i loved it when i was waiting for the crystal re-edition i actually had the opportunity to get the clio and like the price point it's like almost double the price i think it's like 3600 and then at the time the crystal re-edition was like 1600 so it was almost double the price and i was like for a trendy bag that i don't know how much use i'm going to get out of and of course at the time i think the clio was easier to get than the re-edition so in terms of like resale value um the resale value of the re-edition would be better than the Clio. So I was like, I just don't know how much I'm going to use this bag, let alone do I want to spend $3,000 on a bag that I'm not going to use. So I ended up passing on it and I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, stunning. I just think that if you're looking for a crystal bag and um, you're not sure how much you're going to use it, like I'm really, I really don't use it that much, but if you're not sure, then I would probably go with something that's a little bit cheaper. So you get a taste of that without, you know, spending 3000 almost $4,000 on it after tax. Next, going back to YSL is the YSL tote. Um, I really, really love this East West tote. And it was to the point where I was almost like, Hey, I'm going to sell my Neverfull and then buy the leather tote. Um, and of course this was around the time, I think either before COVID or around like the beginning of COVID when we were kind of like, we just started work from home and I was like, Oh yeah, we'll definitely be like out of the office for like three weeks max. We'll for sure be back in the office by June of 2020. And that's like two years later and we're still at home. But, um, I was definitely definitely thinking about selling my Neverfull and getting the leather tote from YSL. It was kind of over the monogram. Didn't love having Bachetta on the Neverfull. Um, I loved the simplicity of the YSL tote. And then at the time it was also like under a thousand dollars. I think it's just over a thousand dollars now, but um, at the time it was like maybe 950. I thought this was a great bag to use for work. And I, I thought I would use this all the time. Granted, we haven't gone back to work, so I just never pulled the trigger on it. I think if we do go back to work, I might consider it, but I also have a very similar like dupe from Italic, which I ended up getting. Um, and I think it was about $200. So I think I'm going to see how much I use the dupe from Italic first and then decide down the road if I want to get the YSL one. Of course, by then the YSL one's probably going to be like $1,500 with all the price increases. I do really like it. It just like, if we weren't in this pandemic or in COVID times, I probably would have gotten it, but because we are, then um, I guess she'll she'll wait around. It'll be fine. Last but certainly not least, on bags I love but did not buy and probably won't buy at this price point now is the Chanel Classic Flap. I think for ten thousand dollars for this bag, and it's probably closer to eleven after taxes. 
it's really not worth it. Um, I recently got a Chanel bag. If you guys follow me on TikTok, um, if you don't follow me on TikTok, here's my TikTok. Go ahead and follow me. Um, but I recently got a Chanel bag. It was a seasonal bag and I got it because I really liked the color. You guys know I'm like really into this like blue phase, literally the color of my nails. And it was, the leather was kind of wrinkly. I don't know if that's the right term for it, but it, it didn't feel like it was very good quality for a $5,500 bag, let alone if you're spending $10,000, literally twice the amount on a classic flap. Yes, it will probably continue to go up in value. Yes, people are going to continue buying it, but I don't see that worth its money. Um, I know a lot of people and me included, I've been like, you know, for $10,000, you might as well like shoot your shot and get a Birkin. And I think that's definitely true. Um, if hypothetically, I were to go to Europe or, you know, go to a more touristy area where they happen to have more stock, I'm just gonna walk in and be like, hey, you got a Birkin. And so maybe, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but at least you know that Hermes quality is way, way above Chanel quality. And I do think that the Chanel quality is declining. Um, so I really don't think that bag is worth it. Um, I do admire it from afar and I definitely respect people who have it because like that takes, especially if you got it like three years ago, like who would have thought that a bag that you bought three years ago would now almost have doubled in value. No one, no one would have thought that. Um, so it's definitely a classic bag. I just like don't see that in my collection. Um, and then also already having the mini black with gold hardware, like you really can't go wrong. Um, and so I feel like that's already quenched my thirst for wanting a classic flap. Had I had known that the classic flap would go up in value this much, you know, last three years, I probably would have gotten one three years ago, but um, you know, you can't predict the future. And so I don't regret not buying it, um, but I probably wouldn't buy it moving forward. Okay, that sums it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please give this a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments which bags you love but didn't buy. I'll leave another video for you guys here and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.